everyone, and welcome to TR's webinar, Beyond the Jargon, Best Practices in People, Process, and Business Value Across Management Consultancies. My name is Allison Crawford, and I am your host for today's session. TB's focus is to provide business research to accelerate our customers' success, and the information we'll be covering today comes directly from our Management Consulting Benchmark Report. This report is unlike anything available in the market today, with analysis delving into how these firms are successfully managing their business growth and operations. Products from research firms cover the industry. TB's unique proposition comes from our company-centric model, enabling us to provide insights into business performance, resource management, market, and strategies of the management consulting firms themselves. Additionally, our report is published semi-annually, offering data continuity that will reveal industry patterns and trends in revenue, headcount, utilization, profitability, and other key metrics on an ongoing basis. We're ready to present some of our most recent findings and get your feedback on our information. Before I move this over to Liz, there are a few action items I'd like to cover. First, we will be recording today's session and posting it to the TBR YouTube channel. We urge you to visit our channel to watch this presentation or any of the others we've posted. We'd like to hear your opinions and thoughts on the materials we're presenting. Please send any questions or comments to the Q&A function or the chat function. We'll address them at the end of the presentation. We'll set the slides to everyone registered for today's webcast within 24 hours of the conclusion of the webinar. Let me introduce the analyst Liz Leonard of the professional services team here at TBR. Liz covering the professional service market with a focus on management consulting for over 10 years and runs the management consulting research program here at TBR. Her insight into the market gives her amazing insight into how vendors are competing globally, and she's interested in discussing her viewpoint on the industry with you. With that, let me hand this over to Liz. Hello, Allison. In 2011, growth and geographic expansion returned to corporate agendas. Access to capital freed up, and as in general, returned in most sectors. For management consulting firms, occurred in both core and fast-growing regions. And the consulting needs around expansion combined with the ongoing business imperatives for cost reduction and operational efficiencies, clients seek to beef up profit margins. Client expectations and demand for management consulting that meet the specific needs in 2011. For no longer do clients want their HR or finance operations transformed, but the industry expertise within that transformation offering to ensure regulatory and compliance issues are met. Twenty also proved a dynamic year for technology-enabled imperatives such as cloud, being analytics, social media, and mobility. For many industries, this was the year that first, you know, a successful deployment of these innovations and truly linked them to more business outcomes. Their importance as a business driver has really taken off. Clients' agendas to improve their bottom line. The management consulting firms themselves found ways to optimize investments for growth while managing to reduce operational costs and continue to evolve their own service delivery for improved profitability and geographic expansion. In this webinar, we will highlight key findings from TBR's recent 2H11 Management and Consulting Benchmark Report, identifying consultancies' peaks and valleys of opportunities, and how their competitive dynamics and approaches shifted. Firms invested more in their people, technology, and facilities, which included office locations and fast-growing markets centers of excellence that showcase their capabilities around the world. All firms increase their volume of industry-specific offerings, which stem from client demand. Firms funded through hiring experienced talent from industry 
and doing more sector specialized offerings that come to their key talents and prospects to their you know, strong suit capabilities. A third dynamic that we saw was how firms de delivered services to our own business results more efficient. They focus on their resource metrics, lower, lower cost resources internally, also improving resource utilization and standardized delivery, which is the bottom line. Our 2H11 management Consulting Benchmark Report provides insights. Consulting firms not only go to market to compete, helps identify where they're investing for growth. Integrating smarter these days, utilizing standardization to achieve greater utilization of their global delivery strategy. Benchmark research compares 60 industry leaders to provide insights into these firms' relative and cumulative success, capitalizing on the evolving opportunities and evolving demand before them. This annual management consulting benchmark research is conducted through direct interviews with leaders of the benchmark firms. Primary research conducted with current former employees and secondary research. This iteration that we published is our second iteration in the grant, which really allows us to point to key trends and change over time in the key business metrics that we look at, including utilization and attrition, which location firm's capacity to grow and be profitable in their own growth. Our also provides insight into other key industry metrics to a comparative firm analysis, correlating change in consulting organizations' measurable business outcomes. This includes understanding of headcount and revenue employee and revenue per partner, utilization, attrition, profit, and investments and future plans. The revenues are also analyzed by region, by service line. These are then also analyzed by vertical, which we have now vertical that we'll get to in a minute to describe. This we have identified and defined include strategy, operations, organization change, and technology consulting. Look at TBR analyzes the Americas, U.S. as a subset of the Americas, and, and APAC. And the reasons for this research include an executive summary of a report and an Excel database and pivot table of metrics, which clients to manipulate and sort these metrics on our own accord. In addition, we have 16 company profiles which provide deep insights into each of the consultancies within benchmark. And we look at each of those consultancies then also by region, by service line, and vertical, better understand each firm's areas of investment and positioning. Recognizes that knowing where and how firms are growing and investing in resources and service capabilities enables competitors, alliance partners, and clientele to plan, to compare, and to select vendors really, you know, that are appropriate for their needs. Our research management consulting. TB clusters or segments firms based on their capabilities for compare purposes, more apples to apples comparison. And we recognize that the competitive assets that each of these segments bring is, is quite unique within itself. Our firms, which when we look at the big four and the solutions led firms, often do compete uh, multidisciplinary in their approach. For instance, 
you know, if you look at how the big four now have increased their growth and their focus back in management consulting, they're also able to tap into the seat level clientele that they serve their other businesses, their tax, their audit, and assurance, which enables them to cross-sell management consulting. And they're already embedded in the strategic decisions of those client organizations. Well, clearly, the multidisciplinary nature of solutions-led players enables to capitalize on the IT or systems integration customers where they leverage knowledge of where their clients are investing or what the business need is in order to draw out business consulting opportunities. The strategy-led firms in 2011 did increase their investments individually and as a whole into the technology consulting arena, expanding their capabilities in that area. As G and technology continue to converge through the use of BI analytics and other tools, that guidance continues between high priority business concerns and the technology enabled strategy and operational improvements. The eight specialty firms that we include approach in that they leverage deep, unique capabilities and address key functional operations, such as human resources and finance. Silver Wyman remains positioned pretty uniquely with its industry-led specialization and the types of consultants we hire. Really emphasize their unique traits and compete on different strengths and assets, and therefore we care them as such throughout. Consulting firms really continued in, in the staff of 2011 and throughout the whole year with pretty strong growth and really enhanced specific expansion efforts as they are offering with not only the high priority business issues and analytics led strategy, but also trying to help their clients enable operational improvements, efficiencies, risk mitigation, and Focusing on regulatory and compliance-led initiatives. In year, in all, the 16 benchmark firms grew revenue that means 17 percent in aggregate. It's a substantial growth year for these firms, considering weak economic climates in Europe and other regions. They relevant, meaningful offerings and things that have transformed and helped their clients, which is increasingly something that management consulting firms must do, prove their value, and prove that the investment in their services really turns around business opportunities for clients. You can see that Deloitte, WC, NZ, et cetera, Ernst & Young, they all led in, in overall revenue, which is that clients' appetites have really grown for experience, experience having global location, and strategy led execution, and as well as the technology enabled business consulting. Firms offer tremendous breadth in their offerings and capability, also, geographic reach, solid long standing reputations in the marketplace, particularly around client service. Activity really propelled the growth leaders. If you look here, the merger that created Aon Hewitt drove more than 62% growth for organization. In 2011, there were numerous tuck-in acquisitions that helped KPMG's growth well above 30%, PC to grow 24% on a year-to-year -year basis, while Venture and Deloitte also leveraged inorganic opportunities to expand revenue, their account, their global footprint, and really key industry-related specialization. Four firms, KPG, PwC, EMY, and Deloitte, really successfully leveraged their non-management consulting business units to harvest consulting opportunities. I feel that promise of being an end-to-end -end service provider. This is McKinsey and BCG 
expanded their operations and consulting capabilities, focused on emerging technologies and widening market opportunities at this time. They their resource mix, which we'll get to in a little bit here. Benchmark firms drove strong annual average growth to the top line, as well as headcount and resource base. And this depicts the relative growth in both headcount and revenues. So the size of the ball represents the size of each firm's annual revenue. The smaller the ball, the smaller the revenue. The top of the Y axis indicates the year to year revenue growth rate. And the to the right on the X axis indicates the rate of headcount growth in the same year. The Aon Hewitt is in that upper right quadrant, driven off its organic substantial merger that formed the new company. As I mentioned earlier, acquisitions also support the big four plus et cetera and their leading growth last year. The records in our Q11 report were Booz and Panini, um, which these companies suffered exposure to the weaker economies, which down their management consulting deals and pricing. Cap headcount diminished by 6% in the last half of 2011. While companies' flat headcount moved their slower revenue expansion. Leaders here focused on deepening industry aligned offerings, bring industry expertise into strategy, into operations, and technology focused services. The actions were also driven in key growth regions to headcount among the leaders like Deloitte, ENY, and PWC, as each of the firms is really competing to expand market share in fast growing geographies. So our team research provides insight into what the key drivers of benchmark firms' relative positions are. We are assessing this time their areas of investment, the type of offerings, ability to improve and increase efficiencies in their own delivery. The nature of management consulting means that the revenue growth is strongly correlated to headcount volume. And leading firms this time really did drive scale of talent um, and, you know, helped drive the relationship nature of this business. Ventures also go to market with deep vertical expertise, reading that that's what their clients need. And they're emphasizing significant growth industries and competitive focus. The high innovation rates, coupled with the low cost resources, and improve operating margin, really enables the firm itself to continue to invest in its own improvement and, and, and be a successful tenant leader over the long term. So we'll put into each of these three areas. Firm increased headcount on an overall basis. This chart here, you'll see not only significant growth in aggregate, but there's pretty solid growth in some of these uh, segments. In particular, the blue bottom here is the big firm, which in year expanded headcount by more than 16% based on the TV estimate. Growth off of a very large base, which indicates the need for that investment. And firms are obviously driving up their cost bases by hiring more people and acquiring more firms, but they see opportunity and they don't want to miss it. One we led was the second largest segment, I really had a relatively poor headcount growth, and this indicated by that red color here. The slow among all of the segments, actually. We'll see later how those firms 
actually dominated the profitability area and probably by not spending as much on headcount in this particular time frame helped enable that profit margin. This total growth in the HR and specialty firms that increased by more than 14%, a very large addition to a small portion you know, of the total market. But stating again, that headcount really strongly correlates to the growth and revenue opportunity. So one thing is the types of resources I shared. So when we total management consulting have grown, it's actually interesting to look at what we find as billable and unbillable employees. Now, BR recognizes that non-billable employees more often the majority of their work is focused on serving internal needs. So they do occasionally bill out and the service they provide may at some point be billable, but the majority of their work is not. The same is true for the billable employees. You know, for the part they're client facing and delivering uh, billable hours. The increased leverage of what we think of as a research group or a knowledge team, uh, the internal suppliers, if you will, uh, to client delivery teams. Is we look here when we see that non billable employees grew, which indicated by those red diamonds on the chart here, that growth, um, the dark blue, <laughs> non billable, mixed up in my own chart here, the blue firms, the dots indicate the rate of growth for the non billable headcount. That's interesting to us because it, it, it does really support the idea uh, that firms opportunity to increase standardization and to look centrally centralized, uh, whether they're located geographically or not, but a centralized effort to support that more expensive client-facing team. Count happened is also an interesting story. You know, we've heard in the news about how Europe and EMEA is a, a sort of challenged area economically. In the meeting consulting world, things are a little bit different. In that, that region itself, which well, it's the same largest, it's small in the Americas, uh, more in line with the size of, of the U.S., it did grow by 10% in terms of headcount. So it's not that these firms are, are not, there, there's no lack of work, there's no lack of opportunity for them. In fact, opportunities around a lot of organization issues um, in the core markets, but also the fast growth segments of, of EMEA are captured here. You know, main homes, the majority of the resources, and you know, a good portion of that is in the United States. Markets themselves are adopting and evolving some of those high priority technologies that they're mobility and social media and finding new ways of doing business. There's a tremendous level of demand to meet compliance needs and those really regulated industries, which we'll talk about next. The new alignment of the offering really revealed in this slide here. The largest vertical remains the financial services. Because at team dollars and making up a good, good aggression of our of our total revenue. On top, not only were they the largest last year, their growth was again in 17% range in aggregate. There was a tremendous amount of, of regulatory reform and compliance needs, as well as the urge of you know competing for for customers through new technologies, exchange into um, more remote locations and to access to, to new customers. So the services marketplace continues to evolve and really drive demand for management consulting. Well, certainly not the largest, it is one of the fastest growing. Average, and across all benchmarks of 22% on a year-to-year -year basis. 
So there's nobody who wants to miss out on the opportunity in healthcare. The way, of course, each firm approaches it and each set serves them is quite different. But it's a heavily regulated industry in an area where you can serve payers, payees, as well as the pharmaceutical uh, players within healthcare with a lot of change and dynamics that are taking shape. The ability of these firms, the bench firms, to improve their depth and expertise from not only hiring the right people, but really evolving offerings and capabilities that align to these needs. So the tactics being used right now to capture opportunity. And as you see the verticals of focus, these are the four largest in aggregate. Uh, and that's financial services, high-tech communications and media, energy and utilities, the industrial solutions and manufacturing business. Each of these is different, uh, different approaches to capital opportunity. While PR has identified the different tactics, there are some regional, global, and again, technology enabled uh, changes that are driving the demand for management consulting. Inside reform also acts these clients and has them seeking out the need of advisory and expertise. Here we refer to as the heat map, which is how much vertical contribution to revenue is taken in each of the firms. So this does highlight the leading the verticals within each of the firms. It is not a relative comparison across. But if you look at firms like Deloitte and um, you know, a firm like Oliver Wyman has much more actual dollars in revenue, but the actual proportion of revenue is what we're looking at within each of the firms. And having a heat map like this really helps understand, you know, where the industry depth is for each of these firms and where the firms are heading in terms of their competitive stance, their positioning, where they invest to grow, their clients and prospects, alignment of offerings is very tightly tied. So you see on the chart that the yellow is the areas um, that are high uh, and, and the red boxes are, are low. Our actual management consulting benchmark report we just published, we also have a heat map for each of these verticals broken out. So again, aligned to each of the firms, but across all nine of the sectors that we highlight here. So understanding where firms are investing is great, and understanding how offerings are aligning to industry needs through relevancy of what firms are offering. In this part, we're looking at how the firms themselves are evolving their own operations to improve their own business outcomes. This chart is in 2011. The management consulting firms utilization rates across the vendors. And as you can see, there isn't really a tremendous variation in general. They're all operating pretty high utilization rates for their resources. For smarter and increasing their leverage of standardization and finding ways through, you know, such as like internal use of social media or Yammer, able to identify and recognize the right resource within their organization globally to tackle a certain engagement or fulfill a need. The more sophisticated and tech savvy, such as Accenture, they basis points from this time last year. And B was 150 basis points. 
from the first of 11 to the second half. So understanding what drives those efficiencies and enables them to sit to those high utilization levels, it now has us wonder how they're doing it, but also understanding that their resource mix is changing in terms of, you know, as part of research and for management consulting, we've also done so much into their resource mix to see leverage of lower cost resources, which are often synonymous with those non-billable resources, providing support for the clustery team. Using costs and be able to get more, you know, successful uh, execution is really helping these firms along. She led firms on average. They didn't hire as, as quickly as we indicated before. They weren't hiring at the same rate as the other segments. They kept their costs down. Overall, as a group, the strategy led firms really led in terms of profitability. Another indicator and driver for McKinsey, whose trading margin is really substantially higher than everybody else, is they do have quite a mature um, internal leverage of lower cost resources for the knowledge team. So a more sure operating method and model and able to have out those higher utilization rates and contain costs is really underpinning this fantastic outcome for the firm this past year. On the left hand side you can see an overall ranking and the first four firms in the ranking are strategy-led firms. The investments that other firms are making, whether in the four, the solutions-led, and the HR and specialty firms, just have really um, not, not as profitable in the same in the same period of time that we're looking at. Firms are opportunistic, and we saw a very strong, optimistic, uh, positive outlook in 2011, as if we're really investing back in, a, in their people, expanding their facilities, and depth in response to what their clients need. And that's by aligning to more vertical needs through strategic hires strategic capabilities and offerings really specific to those fast growing and ongoing demand sectors. The firm's results are also improving their own innovation and driving out more efficiency, which leads to greater profitability. And the ways respond and the way you react to changing economic climates really helps them provide the highest value services, which is to keep them in high demand. So not only is our research uncut a lot of the competitive benchmark and stacking one firm against another analysis, but this is an example of some of the very deep firm-specific analysis we offer in the profiles. We can do mix by region, which we have a snapshot of here. Looking at account, partner level, billable, non-billable, to understand resource mix and how it changes. So on a sequential basis, on a year-to-year -year basis, and over time our research enables us to provide trend analysis in those areas. We have service line revenue contribution to the uh, to the time for each firm, understanding which of these four super segments of service lines um, are the, the main drivers, areas where firms are growing and investing. The total new is, is understood and analyzed on a semi-annual and year-to-year -year basis, as TB does a frequency um, of every six months in these publications, enable us to really keep our thumb on the pulse of what's happening and which of the firms are changing most quickly. Key areas of investments and 
strategy and prove delivery that's in profitability, really what's taking shape in the consulting benchmark firm 2011. PBR sees ongoing change and opportunities as these firms develop more relevant and distinct ROI measurable outcomes for their clients. I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Um, and if you'd like to reach out and contact us to learn more about our management consulting research program, please contact me, or Ken Crawford, our marketing director, or Jane McElroy in our sales. Great, Thanks, Liz. For, for questions. So your questions come in. Um, the first question we have is, how does TBR access firm utilization rates? That's a question. So, TB is a multi channel approach to all of our research. And we do leverage in depth interviews and briefings with leaders of organizations, as well as um, the uh, you know, primary research that I think I mentioned earlier. Um, and any secondary research is really useful. Um, for the firms that are publicly held, there aren't that many. There's privately held organizations. So through the channel approach, we obtain as much information as we can. And then, because we have experience with these companies, several of them are part of our syndicated company-specific reports that we publish um, as a company quarterly and semi-annual basis. We have experience actually modeling that information and understanding utilization rates. Uh, I think is, is in a, a similar vein. Um, how do you determine operating margins for private firms? Is, that is quite similar um, in that we take a multi-channel approach uh, to gathering information. Um, the firms themselves aren't going to tell us what their operating margins are and profitability, but we do have um, a rigorous, consistent approach to evaluate um, operating margin. And we've been doing the same, using the same methods, and able to look at these firms um, from a cost basis as well as top line revenue. Uh, and when you understand where their cost is shifting to. We get a, you know, our, our estimate um, for these firms, um, and then we do conduct quite a bit of primary research um, and and obtain as much information as we can um, from current um, employees and former employees of these organizations. Excellent. What I have is, in your opinion, which firm is the one to watch for best practices? Based on the results. Of, of this benchmark, um, and this benchmark is really looking at 16 diverse organizations. Um, we're seeing tremendous growth is in those firms that are offering what we call kind of multidisciplinary. So if you look at the big four firms, and of course, those is the benchmark leader overall for the size of revenue. Um, so look at Deloitte as far as somebody to keep your eye on, you have to understand that they have scale in terms of headcount. They have geographic reach that's global. Um, what they're doing is investing in the consistent global delivery and back to what I was talking about with standardization. So I think the firms to watch are both Deloitte and also McKinsey that has a really mature um, model and how they operate and leverage that internal team to have a consistent, standardized approach to how they conquer you know, lots of unique situations for clients. The next question that came in is, how are these firms leveraging or not M&A as part of their overall growth strategy? Absolutely. Recent acquisitions, uh, there, was, there was a tremendous uh, amount of acquisition activity that took place um, to expand global footprint 
emerging countries and across Asia Pacific, um, even in Europe, uh, in the United States, to develop more um, depth within an industry, specialized industry. So that when you look at the firms that really expanded headcount to a tremendous degree, which of course the big four firms are all in there, um, you see a lot of M&A activity. So you know, the, having access to capital that firms have been sitting on, um, it, the timing is right to, to go out and, and acquire for talent, for um, scale, and for industry expertise in particular. Uh, or once say industry expertise, there's also expertise aligned to technologies, so using high-priority technologies like social media, um, you know, mobility, be analytics, absolutely. Great. Last question, um, report specific. Are company profiles included in the benchmark report, or can they be sold separately? Yeah. In the annual report, um, team includes, you know, like I mentioned, the three deliverables as the executive summary, uh, and there's also um, five slides or so uh, to that executive summary and report. Then there's the um, Excel database and table, which allows clients to sort and manipulate through the data points. Um, and then there are the 16 company profiles. And each of those profiles is 17 slides in depth, um, and each of them has their own appendix of metrics aligned to geography, vertical, and service line, as well as revenue per employee, revenue per partner, and, and team model information uh, along, you know, uh, utilization and, and operating margin. Um, so you can buy them separately. They're, they're available, but it is part of uh, the deliverable on a semi-annual basis. Well, thanks. Um, so we have no more questions that have come in. We're going to keep uh, the chat lines open for another minute or two to see if anybody else has any questions they want to pose to Liz. Um, we'd like to wrap up the, uh, the uh, webinar today with some information regarding the study that Liz has just talked about. As she mentioned, if you'd like to get access or get some more information, you can contact any of the three of us that were listed on the uh, slides earlier. We're going to chat function open for another five minutes uh, to give anyone who has a last minute question a chance to send it through. Otherwise, look for um, an email from us in the next 24 hours to get the slides. And then if there's questions after you get those slides, please feel free to reach out to either Liz directly or your salesperson. Thanks everyone for attending and have a great afternoon.